I don't find it difficult for celebrities to talk about their sexuality. You're not supposed to do it. No. Tom Hardy. Are you asking me about my sexuality? Arguably the best man for the job when it comes to acting as dark and twisted characters. He's not fucking justified! Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. Christian Bale is not the kind of guy that you want to piss off. The gangster Cray twins in Legends. Do you like being a gangster? Well, no, 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 no. The alter ego of the real life criminal as Charles Bronson. In all my life, I wanted to be famous. <laughs> or Alfie Solomons in Peaky Blinders. Morning, Alfie. Yeah, it is. How did he pull off bringing these intricate characters to life on big and small screens? Is it because of his dark, twisted past? As if you got me in the early days, or the, the, the darker one. Uh, which would be the most fun one to recount? I can't remember. I'm an addict and alcoholic, so I have my ups and downs. And I'm yeah. Like a, you know, sort of, my head is a bit, 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 um, bit wonky. Or because of his versatility as an actor. Is that the course you like? You know, it is changing. You got nothing to worry about when it comes to the old scary London boy. Not bad. Uh, not bad. Yeah, that's when I felt it. I'm a bit of a mongrel, actually, because I, I pick up accents and. What am I supposed to have got? And sometimes I don't know how I'm going to sound until I start speaking. I got my head turned inside out. You don't even see it. On one side, he's the heartwarming family guy, spreading love through charity and inspiring all who cross his path. Children who are in urgent need of the very basics to survive. They need water, they need food, and shelter from harm. With every day that is passing, more lives are being lost. If help doesn't reach them now, then the outcome could be catastrophic. And in fact, chasing down thieves in real life. Yet, on the flip side, there's a glimpse of a different persona, a tempest of toxic masculinity, brawling not just in the ring, but on sets, drug abuse, Theft, a figure wrestling with the demons of temperament. It's a tale of two faces. This is the Tom Hardy Paradox. Born on September 15, 1977, in the Hammersmith District of London, Edward Thomas Hardy is the only child of Elizabeth Ann Barrett, an artist and painter, and Edward Chips Hardy, a novelist and comedy writer. His maternal roots trace back to Irish descent. He spent his early years at Reed's School and continued his education at Tower House School and Richmond Drama School. Growing up, things weren't always smooth. He had a tough time with his dad and he felt insecure about how he looked and how sensitive he was, something that still sticks with him today. Imagine, an extraordinary actor who's also known for his striking good looks never felt that way about himself. These years were tough for Hardy due to his overconsumption of alcohol and crack. He has opened up about the horrors he lived through from 12 to 19 years of age due to his addictions. Hardy's addiction to crack cocaine was so bad that he once admitted he would have sold his mum for crack. Speaking openly about his battle with addiction, he proudly and happily declared his sobriety since 2003. His first encounter with thinking about drugs was when he was 11. Once the police enforcement visited his school and warned his class about the dangers of sniffing glue, but he thought, I know where to find that now, bang. By the age of 13, he found himself involved with hallucinogens, describing it as fun and games, leading to a downward spiral where he was evading law enforcement. If this wasn't enough, he got expelled from his boarding school, Reeds in Surrey. However, this time for theft, Tom Hardy used to steal sports uniforms, after getting caught, it got worse, and he recalls once he went a little too far. When he was just 15 years old, Tom got arrested for joyriding. His privileged and peaceful upbringing pushed him to want to mess up everything. He stole a Mercedes out for a spin when he got chased down. How many cars did you steal? A, a lot of cars, John. A lot of cars. <laughs> but he was also found in possession of a stolen firearm. Troubled teenager? You bet. Addiction and getting into trouble sent him straight to a rehabilitation center. And that's when he found the motivation to follow his dreams. As soon as he finished high school, he decided on the path the rest of his life will take. In 1998, the 21-year-old Tom Hardy burst onto the scene by clinching victory in the Big Breakfast's Find Me a Supermodel competition. It's Tom Hardy. Good morning, Tom. A feat that earned him a brief contract with Models One. 
A pivotal moment occurred when he joined Drama Center London in the same year. Janovic, what's your reading? Cutting his studies short to seize the role of U.S. Army Private John Janovac in the acclaimed HBO BBC miniseries Band of Brothers. I'm going home now. Mannheim. I'll take this one. Hardy's foray into film began with a bang in Ridley Scott's war thriller Black Hawk Down, 2001, setting the stage for a diverse and prolific career. If there's no love, there's no life. Surrounded by this life and lies. Unknown to many, Hardy briefly dabbled in the world of rap and hip hop production with his friend Edward Tracy. I started rapping when I was about 14. And I was you know, doing it just for fun. Under the moniker Tommy No One Plus Eddie Too Tall, even recording a mixtape titled Falling on Your Arse in 1999, a hidden gem released to the public in 2018. In the same year of 1999, Hardy entered matrimony with producer Sarah Ward, a union that concluded in divorce in 2004. As his career gained momentum, well, he sure is only looking for you. Hardy played the role of Reman Prater Shinzon in Star Trek Nemesis 2002 and explored various film projects including Dot the Eye, The Deserter, and LD-50 Lethal Dose. The year 2003 marked a turning point with Hardy receiving the London Evening Standard Theatre Award for Outstanding Newcomer for his outstanding performances in Blood and in Arabia, We'd All Be Kings. Of course, of course, we're very, very happy that uh, Dot the Eye has been nominated for an award tonight. Hardy's artistic journey extended beyond cinema as he ventured into television with memorable roles in The Virgin Queen, 2005. And the death lies within, it controls you. And the BBC4 adaptation of A for Andromeda, 2006. Nothing. Um, <clears throat> are you okay? He crossed paths with assistant director Rachel Speed on the set of The Virgin Queen, and their connection blossomed into a romance resulting in the birth of a son. Unfortunately, the pair parted ways in 2009. In 2007, he took on the challenging lead role in Stuart, a life backwards portraying Stuart Shorter, a homeless man subjected to years of abuse, showcasing his versatility. Continuing his small screen success, Hardy played Bill Sykes in the BBC miniseries Oliver Twist, 2007, and a drug-addicted rapist in the British horror thriller hey, his diversity shown through in Guy Ritchie's London gangster film, Rock and Rolla, 2008, where Hardy played the role of the complex gay gangster, Handsome Bob. However, it was the transformative role in the film Bronson, 2008, it's been nice. that truly showcased Hardy's commitment to his craft. The time stopped for no man, ladies and germs, and my time was coming up. Portraying the real-life English prisoner Charles Bronson. To prepare for the role, Hardy undertook an astonishing physical transformation as he gained a staggering three stone, 19 kgs in weight, a remarkable feat that underscored his dedication to authenticity. Beyond the physical aspects, Hardy delved into extensive research on Charles Bronson's life, studying his mannerisms, speech patterns, and the psychological intricacies that defined the notorious prisoner. Television remained a significant part of Hardy's career with standout performances in The Take, 2009, and Wuthering Heights, 2009. I could as soon as forget you as my own existence. His stage presence in The Long Red Road at the Goodman Theater in Chicago received commendation, adding another layer to his artistic repertoire. Hardy's romantic journey took a new turn when he embarked on a relationship with actress Charlotte Riley, whom he met during the filming of Wuthering Heights. Um, I have one glimpse of your face. Their love story culminated in marriage in July 2014, and they are proud parents to two sons. By 2010, Hardy firmly established himself in Hollywood with a standout role as Eames in Christopher Nolan's Inception, a performance that garnered him a BAFTA Rising Star Award. Myself, not following his footsteps. So what is this idea that you need to plan? Maybe we could share. The relationship with the father. Please welcome Tom Hardy. He seamlessly replaced Michael Fassbender in the 2011 film adaptation of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, further solidifying his status as a versatile actor. So it took me so long to come home. 
Ricky has been helping us, Peter. Front. He's a sort of ladies' man, come. The subsequent years marked Hardy's ascent with critically acclaimed performances in Warrior and then another career-defining role of the supervillain Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. For Tom Hardy's portrayal of Bane in The Dark Knight Rises, his inspiration went beyond the traditional sources. Hardy drew inspiration from a real-life figure named Bartley Gorman, a bare-knuckle fighter known for his participation in illegal matches during the 70s and 80s. Gorman's legendary status in the underground fighting scene left an indelible mark, and even though Gorman's voice doesn't seem exactly like Bane's, Tom Hardy and the director, Christopher Nolan, played around with it to make it sound different and interesting. This bomb is mobile, and the identity of the Trigger Man is a mystery. Let's not stand on ceremony here, Mr. Wayne. Some people liked it, and some didn't. But the goal was to avoid making Bane sound like a typical bad guy. Or perhaps he's wondering why someone would shoot a man before throwing him out of a plane. It doesn't matter who we are. They wanted him to be unique and easy to remember. Even if people have different opinions about how good Bane turned out in the movie, Tom Hardy's careful thinking about how the character should talk definitely made him stand out. During this time, he was also working in the film Lawless, alongside Shia LaBeouf. Things took a dark turn on the set, which brought in a lot of controversies for Tom Hardy. During the filming of Lawless, there were reports of a physical confrontation between Tom Hardy and co-star Shia LaBeouf. However, according to Shia LaBeouf, he and Tom Hardy used to have friendly wrestling matches for fun. One day, while Shia was with his girlfriend, Hardy unexpectedly started a wrestling match. Shia denies the rumors of knocking out Hardy, explaining that it was a playful tussle that ended with Hardy accidentally falling down the stairs. Despite this, Hardy jokingly claimed on the set of Lawless that Shia had knocked him out. Yeah, I get it, it's difficult to digest that Shia was able to bring down a man as big as Tom Hardy, especially considering his hot temperament. Oh, let's be the mystery. We got no way to understand this world. We got about as much sense of it as bird flying in the sky. There were times Hardy lost it. One of his fingers is a lifetime curse of his temperament issues. If you watch closely in films, you might notice something peculiar about the pinky finger on Tom Hardy's right hand. It's more prominent in interviews where he gesticulates against a plain backdrop. It perpetually curls inward and the actor can never straighten it out. This is due to an occasion when Hardy stabbed a knife into a chopping board, severing a tendon in that finger. He had to have three separate operations to allow him to be able to close the pinky finger into a fist along with the rest of his digits, but he'll never be able to straighten it. But let's not be so judgmental on his outburst. The guy is amazing. He once chased down actual thieves. You heard that right. From being a thief in his teenage years to catching one is quite a paradox. Once two teenagers were riding a stolen moped and they crashed into a car. Tom Hardy saw this and decided to become a real life superhero. Witnesses say he looked just as crazy as he does on TV. He started chasing one of the teenagers, jumping over walls like it was a game. People watching thought it was like a scene from a superhero movie. One person even said if the teenager had tried to fight back, wasn't a wise move. The teenagers eventually got arrested. Well, let's rewind a bit and get back to Hardy's Hollywood career. His prowess reached new heights with his roles in films like Mad Max. Hardy takes on the role of Max, who is thrust into the position of being a hero, even if that's not intentionally how he acts. While he isn't out seeking to do good for others, he ends up doing so and is an incredible action hero, with this being one of his most memorable roles. I suggest we go back the same way we came. He continued his stardom with films like Child 44 and Legend, where he played the infamous Cray Twins. The where are we going? She's pregnant. In 2016, Hardy earned a spot on DeBrett's list of the most influential individuals in the United Kingdom. Recognizing his significant contributions to drama, he was honored with the title of Commander of the Order of the British Empire (CBE) in the 2018 Birthday Honors. But the subsequent year was hard on him. 
Tom Hardy and his wife shared their home with two rescue dogs, Max and Woodstock. Your friend here. Yeah, this is Woody. He's, uh, he's wearing Alexander McQueen tonight, aren't you, mate? Hi, Woody. Yeah, Woody's a stalwart member of the crew. Tragically, Woodstock passed away on the 5th of June, 2017, succumbing to an aggressive case of polymyositis. Bagging his first ever Oscar nod for Best Supporting Actor in Alejandro's The Revenant, Tom Hardy showcased his acting chops, proving he's more versatile than a chameleon at a color festival. In a movie where the main villain is a bear with serious attitude problems, Hardy's character, John Fitzgerald, takes the cake for being the least likable human around. I'm working on it. You can work on it later when I'm done talking to you. Picture this. If compassion were currency, Fitzgerald would be the guy trying to pay for groceries with Monopoly money. And, well, you don't get a much more heroic role than playing a Royal Air Force pilot, do you? Tom Hardy took on that role as farrier for Christopher Nolan's movie Dunkirk, and it is certainly the most heroic part that he has played up to this point in his career. Beyond conquering the big screen with his compelling performances, Tom Hardy has made his mark in the television landscape with the recurring role of Alfie Solomons in the blockbuster British drama series Peaky Blinders, sharing the screen with the likes of Cillian Murphy. Five years later, Hardy embarked on a thrilling journey into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, donning the lead role of Eddie Brock and the symbiotic anti-hero Venom in 2017. The film soared to box office heights, raking in a staggering $856.1 million worldwide. The actor continued his symbiotic journey in the 2021 sequel, Venom. And you are mine. Let there be carnage. Hardy's portrayal of Venom has resonated with audiences globally, building anticipation for his return to the Marvel Universe. With an impressive array of roles and a knack for bringing characters to life, Tom Hardy remains a force to be reckoned with in the realms of both film and television. Hardy, during all this, served as an executive producer for the BBC FX miniseries A Christmas Carol and starred in the crime film The Drop alongside James Gandolfini. His versatility was further highlighted when he took on the challenging role of Al Capone in the 2020 biopic Capone. The man never stopped here. Tom Hardy is an avid practitioner of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He has won a number of jiu-jitsu competitions, with one such occurrence being at the UMAC Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Open Championships in September 2022. Also to note is his never-ending love for helping others with all his charitable work. In 2010, Hardy became an ambassador for the Prince's Trust, a UK youth charity which provides training, personal development, business startup support, mentoring, and advice. In 2012, he and his wife Charlotte Riley became patrons of Bowel Cancer UK. As of the present, Tom Hardy's cinematic odyssey shows no sign of slowing down. He is attached to star in various upcoming projects, including a biopic of British war photographer Don McCullen, the sequel Venom Let There Be Carnage, and a portrayal of Antarctic explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton. With each role, Hardy continues to redefine his boundaries solidifying his place as one of Hollywood's most dynamic and captivating actors. Everest is obvious to climb because it's there, it's a mountain. But personal Everests, you know, you can't see them, you know, and that, that journey to the top of the mountain and back down again is fraught with hazards. So never give up on a dream.